Father, we come this morning and we thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, this morning as we have met in a format where the two or three are gathered together, you have promised your presence, your manifest presence, and we thank you this morning. You're in our midst, Father. And we pray, Lord, this morning that you would take control of everyone, open their hearts, their minds, that we may see something of thy word that would illuminate us. And Father, would enlighten us to see the path you want us to go and follow. And we commit everything to your hand. You could say the Spirit of the Lord's upon me. And I just want to pray the Spirit of the Lord's upon me and it's not to be preaching. Thank you, Father. You know, there's a thing in my life years ago, I want to show you a wee thing. Really, first of all, come to me. You know, that verse I was telling you earlier on is First Corinthians. First Corinthians 11, 12. You see this? This is Paul coming along here. No, he's not. But listen, that's here. Paul came along here. And Paul started to preach and go and love for the Lord. And see, years ago, I seen a couple of wee things that really highlight him. Who's the Lord Jesus Christ today? God has given him all authority. God has given his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, after he rose from the dead, all authority, delegated authority to his son. And you'll find that in Matthew 28. Matthew 28, verse 18. You know, years ago I started to look at this myself. Matthew, Matthew 28, verse 18. I think. I the Matthew 28, verse 18. All power. Satan words and all authority is given unto me in heaven and on earth. God the Father has given all authority to the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven and on earth. Right? If you read Philippians 2, verse 8 and 9, you'll read this and under there. Right. Read verse 9. Wherefore God has highly exalted him, given him a name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and confess. That at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven, of things on earth, of things under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. All heaven, all things on earth, under the earth. We're under the authority now of the delegate of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul seems to be the only man seen this. Oh, you show you this as, as a young believer. I read this one day. It's Hebrews chapter 3. Verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, Consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. See the side margin up there. The apostle and high priest of our confession. See, I'll ask you a question here. This: What are you confessing out of your mouth? The Lord Jesus today is the apostle and high priest of our confession. You understand that? What does that mean? When you confess, he's the high priest. Okay? Now what's this? If you, that's found, and I wrote this years ago, that's found in three places in Hebrews. Hebrews 4 verse 14. Hebrews 10 verse 23. Hebrews 4 verse 14. Seeing then that we have a high great, now listen, a great high priest. And by the way, we are priests today. Lord Jesus Christ is the apostle and the great high priest. Okay? Hebrews 4 verse 14. That is passed into heaven, Jesus the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. Or our prophet. Let us hold fast our confession. Okay? Now if you read Hebrews 10 verse 23. Hebrews 10 verse 23. Let us hold fast the profession or confession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful as promised. 
And I just, in my life, I thought, what am I confessing? My two over the years, the Lord has given me and showed me things about the Lord Jesus Christ. And all I done was try to walk in them. And I could tell you this, for some reason, when you profess the risen, glorified Lord Jesus Christ, there's an opposition here for some reason. In this word. Now what's this? If you confess the Lord Jesus Christ, we you see what God the Father does, and what you see what the Lord Jesus does here. If you go to Luke chapter 12. See as, see as you start to see things in your, in your walk with, the Lord, with God. You try by the wisdom of God walk in the revelation of God's you. But I tell you this. Don't try and don't be bit off with other people. Try you to walk in what God's showing you. Let me see this. Luke chapter 12, verse 9. Luke 12, verse 9. I read from verse 8. But I, also I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of God confess before the angels. So if you and I see the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you walk forward and you confess that. The Lord Jesus is going and confessing you before the angels. Go back to it. The Lord Jesus is the apostle and the high priest of our confession. See that? And wherever we're confessing, if we're confessing the right stuff, he's going to the angels. He's confessing ones that do this before the angels. Could I tell you yes? I'm not going to talk about angels this morning. That's how you start to get your angels to work. Protection of angels. By confessing the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and I say, but he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angel of God. So if you don't confess the revelation of God starts to show you, you have been denied before the angels, and your angels will probably not work too well for you. I'm leaving that. I'm not talking about angels. And that's a quotation found in Matthew. That same quotation is found in Matthew 10, verse 32. Matthew 10, verse 32. A couple of verses again. Whosoever, whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father, which is in heaven. So the Lord Jesus Christ goes in this verse and confesses those who confess the Lord Jesus Christ. James, if you shall ever confess as me, the Lord, let's not read it again. Whosoever therefore shall confess me, the Lord Jesus Christ, before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Them two verses, one doesn't mention angels there, other Luke 12 does. Confess who or what? Confess the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? And for by that, the Lord Jesus Christ now is the apostle, high priest of our confession. What are you confessing? Right? I don't know you ever thought that before, no. But that's one of the significant things of the Lord Jesus today. Is the apostle and high priest of our confession. Could I tell you yes? Maybe as some us are ashamed to mention the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the stigma and everything goes with it. Okay, and I was saying earlier on there in verse and here, if you go to Acts 15, Acts 15. Acts 15. I read it earlier on there. Acts, I didn't realize we were taking maybe that. Acts 15, verse 26. Men that have hazarded their lives for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul and Barnabas came along and they started preaching the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? 
What, what's this? All authority in heaven and earth and under the earth is now given to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's risen from the dead. Now, I've quoted this quite a number of times over the years. But tell me this in all honesty. That's we this morning. I want to show you the Lord Jesus Christ in his totality. What he is today to each one of us. When you get a revelation, you start confessing who the Lord is to you. What's this? If you go to, uh, well, we'll just start with Acts 2, Acts 2, verse 21. Please turn these scriptures over just to see this. Acts 2, verse 21. The day of Pentecost has come. Supernaturally, the church has received the, the anointing of the Spirit came upon all the believers. He started speaking in tongues. And this was a prophecy from Joel chapter 2, verse 32. And it says in Joel 2, 32, In that day, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What day? After the Lord Jesus has died, spread, and rose again. And now whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. That is the message for the church today. To come to the Lord Jesus Christ and call upon the name of the Lord. And that's the gospel. That's in this dispensation. You can read it in there. Verse 17. It shall, it shall come to pass in the last days, saith the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That's what Joel prophesied in Joel 2. That day occurred after the Lord Jesus rose from the dead on the sender. Now the Spirit has come. Okay? I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my Spirit, and shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and beam and smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. See, today, somebody maybe online or somebody listening to this, maybe our CD, maybe online, needs to hear you get saved. What do you need to do? Even though you're a sinner, even though Christ has died for you, and whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's, 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 that's the gospel. I preach the gospel. And if you go to Acts 2, there's 36. Peter comes along and explains a lot of things that happened. It says, verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Jesus is not Jesus anymore. He's the Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen. Most of us will hear that, but most of us will not confess it. Whosoever should confess me, not me, the Lord Jesus Christ before the Father, him will I confess before the Father, and him will I confess before the angels. Now, the problem lies, here's the key. What's that? What's the speed Now, if you go to Acts, Romans 14, verse 7 to 9. Romans 14, 7 to 9. Years ago, I seen this. And I started saying, I, my mindset changed, and I was preaching Jesus, and I was preaching, I get baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I was, I was praying and taking authority in the name of Jesus. And I see a revelation. Well, here we hear what I'm saying. Hopefully I've walked in the revelation that I showed me. Right. Uh, now listen, a lot of people think, what's the difference? You're not confessing who the Lord Jesus is. Acts 4, uh, Romans 14, verse 7 to 9. None of liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. A.V. But whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, die, we are the Lord's. 
For to this end Christ died, both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord, both of the dead and the living. For this end Christ both died and rose. For this end, what? That he might be Lord over the dead and the living. Jesus died, revived, that he might be Lord. And God has given him all delegate authority. In this essence is, whoever shall confess the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord will go and confess you before angels, and the Lord will go and confess you before the Father. The Lord Jesus now the apostle and high priest of your confession. And a lot of people have been taught to confess scripture. That verse is not saying, that verse is not saying confess scripture. That verse is saying confess the Lord Jesus Christ. No, no, this is that. Whosoever shall confess me. I'm going to confess the scripture. But tell me this time you get the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now what's this? That's you by the gospel of calling upon the Lord. I just want to show you this, and I've showed you all these things before. Go you to Acts 19. Acts 19. See, you and I should, should not be doing anything just out of formality. You and I should be doing things out of revelation that God reveals he's just to you. Right. Acts 19, verse 5. When they heard this, they were about, now I, have, I missed out a few verses there, a couple of verses, you know, the word Queen means, arm way, a couple of verses. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Well, you know this here, before that, Jesus gave, gave a commission in Matthew 28, and he says, go into all the world, preach the gospel, make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Paul comes along here. And Paul had a revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul turns around and tells him, <clears throat> when he heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul had a revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why he says, for the gospel, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 2.21, Romans 10.13. If I should confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in the heart that God raised him, they shall be saved. And whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 10, Romans 10.13. That's this known phrase. Acts 16.30-31. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Call it in you. How? By calling upon the Lord. That is the message the word needs to hear. They don't need to hear all these different ways of setting things up. They just need to hear the right message. And what's that mean about here? How do you get baptized? Baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We in church, when we see this, our format should be, we baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? What's this? Go you to Acts 19. Acts 19, verse 13. Paul comes along here and God, says God had wrote special miracles by the hands of Paul so that from his body were brought and his, were sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits were out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews exers took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, we do you by Jesus, whom you all preach. Right? Verse 14. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, a chief of the priests which did so. And the evil spirits answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? When you start walking in the authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I tell you this, you're not known even in the Father, and the Son, and the angels. You're known by another crowd. Mutual authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's a Paul done here. That's a Paul walked in. Because these spirits, listen, verse 13. Then certain the vagabond Jews actually took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus. Where did you hear that from? Who did you hear it from? Paul. 
And he doesn't see that there. You go down to verse, verse 17. And this was known of all the Jews and Greeks, also the dwelling of Ephesus, and fear fell, fell all up. Fear fell on them all. On the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus was magnified. So when you and I start preaching and confessing the Lord Jesus Christ, the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And you must hear all I'm just saying to you is in our mood, I've tried to set that out to try and show you the Lord Jesus. But what's this you got here now? See this here now. If you go, if you go here, uh, right. Go you to Matthew six, Matthew eighteen, verse twenty. Matthew eighteen, verse twenty. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in this. So the Lord has promised His presence, His manifest presence. When believers gather to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, where two or three are gathered together in my name, then am I in the midst. And listen, I, that's all I want to say about that. There's no way. We here in our way, we gather to we are, we gather to the house of the Lord and we meet the Lord. We do that for a reason. Because we believe in Scripture. Right? Now, there's a whole pile of places where you can read of this. If you go to Genesis 49, as a young believer, I didn't know where to go or what to do. If I can remember right, it's Genesis 49, verse 10. You'll read a verse... Jacob comes along and he starts to prophesy over his sons. And he comes along to this one here as a Judah. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from his feet, until Shelah comes, and unto him shall be given the people. Who was Shelah? It was a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Until Shelah comes, Shelah has come. Unto him shall the gathering of the people be. The gathering of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are gathered to the Lord. And that was a portrait of starting in Genesis. And if you go to uh, Psalm 50, verse 5. See, years ago, I come to what do I do, or where do I go, and what do I follow? See, this morning, I'm not trying to push what I've shown on to you. I'm just setting out scripture for you to see yourself. That's in that here. Psalm 50, verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me. Where's, where's God's saints to be gathered? The Lord. Those have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Now, you hear honest, we do not do anything here just by format or formalism. We're trying, just trying to follow the Lord. <coughs> The way the Lord is set out. There's other verses you can look at here. But what's this here? We just saying if I can show you. Right? Revelation 3 in a common day. Revelation 3. In a common day will be those rewarded for holding on to the name of the Lord Jesus. Revelation 3, verse 8. I know thy works, behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut. For thou hast a little strength, and thou hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. And it's a red writing. That's the Lord Jesus Christ's name. And the rewards for, for believers, if we are overcomers, for those who walk in the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Now, if you go, you go here, just watch this. Uh, if you go here, you'll go to another thing. And you'll read this on, uh, found in Acts 9, verse 2. If you get a chance and you listen to this maybe online, take a piece of paper and write all them verses out and just look at them and yourself. Right? And a lot of people, we have been told the word to confess the word. This morning I'm asking you to confess the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Because when you confess the Lord, the Lord goes to the angels and the Lord goes to the Father. Because you're uplifting the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's not what we'll say here. You guard your heart. The Lord shows you this revelation. And you walk in the revelation that God shows you. If you go to Acts chapter 9 verse 2. There's a, there's a format here set out in scripture that Paul comes along and he was threatening for Paul was a very stench Jew and he was steeped in Jewish religion and he came along and he started to persecute these people here disciples of the Lord Acts 9 verse 2 and Saul yet beating out threatens a slaughter against the disciples of the Lord now, they weren't disciples of a certain way or a religion. They were disciples who followed the Lord. You read the next verse and read this. And desired letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that they found any of this way. Whether they were men or women, you may bring them bound on the drift. What way? Disciples. The Lord. That's only who Paul looked up. So Paul, who, who Paul killed and knocked up and threatened people who were followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I tell you, it hasn't changed. You will not get so much very much persecution, but when you become a, a follower of the way, you step into a place where you're going to, you need to learn to walk by grace and the persecution that will come against you because you become a disciple of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Children of the way is found in four or five places in Acts. Right? If you go to where in Acts 19, where you find these places. Acts 19, verse 9. Paul went and he started to preach after he gets converted. And he went into the Jewish synagogues. We hear this. And he started to preach. And he started to preach the Lord Jesus. And they get hardened. Verse 9, Acts 19, verse 9. But, but when divers were hardened and believed not, but speak evil of that way. See, if you go and start to preach and follow the Lord, and you turn around to, I go to, I'm going to follow the Lord, they'll start to preach evil of that way. But what are you going to do with your heart? You go and guard it. You go keep walking with the Lord. That's where the power is. That's where the presence is. And that's where the peace is going to in the Revelation. If you go to Acts 19, verse 9, we'll try and finish this one back. But with, he did, departed from and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of Thomas. Paul separated the disciples, disciples of who? Disciples of the Lord. And took them and taught them in a wee school called the school of Thomas. Did you see them, disciples of the Lord? They, if you read on down a bit, you'll find out that wait until yes, verse 10, and this continued by the space of two years, so that all they heard, all they which would dwell in Asia heard the word of the Lord, Jesus. What did they hear? What word did they hear? The Lord Jesus. What did they, say, what did they hear? The Lord Jesus. And what happened? Both Jews and Greeks. And God wrote the spirit of miracles. Could I tell you this? You'll read on down there that they changed Asia. Could have got school. Because they, all they heard was the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? What's this? And listen, I'm only just setting out and trying to set out why we do this, what we do. And all we're doing is trying to follow the Lord. I believe that we all need to get saved. We all need to be believers. And disciples of the Lord. Can I tell you this? I don't see... That's a tunnel vision. I see that's the main priority of the church. Please. I know there's other things. But I tell you, you missed that link. You're going into self-help groups and different things. But see, when you follow the Lord, what's this for you then? What's this? Right. Okay. If you go to uh, Acts 20, Acts 20, I like say years ago I sat and looked at this and tried to follow the Lord saying, we see this. 
Because of the pandemic, we don't break bread anymore. Okay, what's this? Listen, that format will start again. Acts 20, verse 7. Upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, who came together? Disciples. Disciples of who? The Lord. When? On the first day of the week. On the first day of the week, the disciples of the Lord came together to break bread. See the format. Listen, I'm, I'm only just saying things out this morning just to show you why we do these things. I remember a lot of people are looking on and says, they're very dogmatic. And things. No, we're only trying to follow the Lord. We are children of the way, followers of the Lord. Right. Now, let me show you this wee thing here. The Lord's coming by again. Okay? You understand me? Where's the Lord? The Lord's coming back. But we show you this. When we break bread, what happens? 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11. See, I don't know about you, but I don't like to know. Why should I do this? No, sir, do not saying we don't even know why we're doing it. 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11. I can find this one. Right? right? I read verse 18. For First of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. This was in Corinth. For there must be heresies. Okay, we'll go down a wee bit further if I find this verse. Verse 23. For I received of the Lord that which I deliver unto you. Right? That the Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, Take eat this in my body, broken for you, this do and remembers me. After the same monster, he took the cup, and when he had supped it, this cup is the New Testament of my blood, this do also, this do ye as oft as ye drink it, and remember to me. For as so often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death when he comes. Every, when we break bread, we show the Lord's death. Usually once a week we do, because of the pandemic, we've had to stop it, but sharing things and different things. We show the Lord's death. But I tell you, yes, I always say, cause you to remember what the Lord has done for you. Till he comes. The Lord's coming back again. Coming. The Lord's coming again. And what's that? Go you to Titus. Titus. Titus chapter 2. Right. I was talking last week about the grace of God. Excuse me. Teaching us that denying, all right, okay. Let me see what it says. Verse 11, Titus 2, verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of a great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord's coming back. Who's he come back for? Oh dear. Right? I don't want to I'll just, leave, I'll just leave it there I'm just trying to show you about the Lord this morning you must hear more and more if you realise wait till you all this stuff's coming on the earth all this stuff's happening what are you looking at? I'm looking for the coming of the Lord ok now what's that thing I'm going to show you I'm just going to show you things once you see this the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ is the high priest, apostle and high priest of my confession and your confession. And when I confess the Lord Jesus Christ, when I confess the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus goes to the angels and he goes to the Father and he confesses me or he confesses you. Does that make sense here? But the Lord is a lot more things in your life. And you start to see that. The Lord is your Savior. Yeah, the Lord, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's other things. Why does that sweet thing? I'll show you that. Now, Psalm 46, verse 1. Psalm 46, verse 1. See, 
We have a system here that we maybe go to other people instead of going to the Lord. What's that? Psalm verse David. Maybe yes. Psalm 46, right? Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help and trouble. Okay. Well, if you go to that quotation that's found in Hebrews, let's go to Psalm 27, verse 1. Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? That, them two verses is quoted in Hebrews 13. And these verses is quoting about the Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews 13, verse 5. This last part of the verse in Hebrews 13, verse 5. Jesus quoted this in Matthew 28, verse 20. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. The Lord is your strength in the day of trouble. The Lord will never leave his sins, nor he will never forsake us. We'll forsake and we'll leave, but leave the Lord will not. Wait, what are you saying? Wait, so that we even may boldly confess, the Lord is my helper. Yes, is it? The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall be unto me. The Lord is your help in the day of trouble. Confess the Lord before you. The Lord is the strength of my life. I will never, the Lord will never leave me and forsake me. I will call upon the Lord. See what I'm saying? Call upon him for salvation and call upon him in the day of trouble. Psalm 50, verse 15, 15, 15 and 16. Psalm 50, verse 16, 15 and 16. Just wait a minute. Please. Yeah. Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you. I, I, I thought we saw that in the day of trouble. I will call upon the Lord. We hear this in the day of trouble. I will call upon the Lord, and I will glorify Him. And I go to the Lord. Call upon me in the day of trouble. And I will deliver thee. Call upon me in the day of trouble. And I will glorify me. Not me, the Lord. I'm just saying that do we know that we have the Lord for everything? Now, whatever that problem is, that trouble, where do you go or what are you doing? Look at, the, look at the pandemic, look at the problems, look at all the world. What are you looking at? Looking on to Jesus. The Lord's coming back. Looking at the Lord Jesus in the day of trouble, calling upon the Lord. Now listen, can I tell you this? This is something else we need to raise open up to. Because we're looking to man and we're looking to everybody else. We were never meant to do it. We were always meant to look to the Lord. You see this? The Lord is my caretaker. The Lord is your caretaker. Never made, he's not the high priest of my confession, so he is and yours, but he's also my caretaker. On the day of trouble, you call upon the Lord. First Peter 5, verse 7. First Peter 5. First Peter 5, verse 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Casting all upon him. Cares for you. You and I need a revelation of the Lord your caretaker. And we need a revelation in the day of trouble or whatever calamity comes along, you go and you call upon the Lord. And that verse says that you you glorify God and the Lord Jesus by going to the Lord, not going to somebody else. Well, see, wait, there's a couple more here. Not there's, there's a lot more. But see, that's Romans chapter 12. You and I might get into problems in life and different things, and other people annoy us and different things. Oh, yes, some Romans 12. We quote this week again. The Lord is everything. 
Romans 12, verse 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. When you come into a place and you think you need to sort things out, it's not your job to sort anything. It's your job, but rather give place under wrath for his written vengeance as mine, said the Lord. You let the Lord sort out the situation. Listen, you can read all this yourself. Do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Go to the Lord, walk in love, mercy, and forgiveness. Totally depending on the Lord to sort the situation. I, I, I can only skip over these for the sake of time. So I'm, not, I'm not up here. But wait till you see every one of these. You not you need to time out. But wait till you see, see when you're in trouble. Where do you go? What, who have you been taught to go to? What's this? Go to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. <clears throat> the psalmist has some powerful revelation. So I'm going to read verse 2. Trust in the Lord and do good. That sounds good. And you come, believe it. Trust in the Lord. So shall I dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of thine heart. There's trust and delight. Trust, whatever the problem you have, do good. Yeah. Do not fret. Do not pick up unforgiveness. Do not pick up bitterness. Do not pick up judgment, especially judgment. Do not condemn. If you move into the new common or the, and, and Luke 6 and Matthew 5, 6 and 7, you're reading, that's what we should be doing. But then verses say, Judge not, lest you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And people are telling you, I know what I would do. Listen, you get to find out what the Lord wants you to do. Not what other people think. <coughs> Read the next verse. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Right? Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. Now, I, for the sake of this morning, I haven't time to tell you, so I'll just quote these verses to you. There's a wee verse in Proverbs 16 that says, Commit your works, and your thoughts shall be established. Proverbs 16, 3. There's a wee verse in 1 Peter 4, 19 that says, Commit your soul unto a faithful creator. What's your soul? Your mind, your will, and emotions. 1 Peter 5, I quote already, verse 7. Casting all your care upon the Lord. Psalm 55, verse 22. Cast thy burdens upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He will not permit the righteous to stumble. What do you not permit? He will not permit you to stumble. Let's see the next verse. Read this one again. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust us, and he shall bring it to pass, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. So what's going to happen in your life when you trust and do good, when you delight in the Lord, when you commit to the Lord, when you trust in him, listen, you're coming out of the situation. Now we hear this next one. Verse 7. Rest in the Lord. And wait patiently on the Lord. And in that waiting and resting, do not fret. Do not complain. Do not judge. Do not condemn. See? Because that will stop the grace in your life when you do them things. And see the side margin this wee Bible I have here. When you've done all them things, you be silent before the Lord and you let God work. But when you're, when you're, if, you're not, if you're not resting and waiting on God, you're stepping into the situation and God can't do a thing in the situation. You've committed everything to the Lord. You've trusted in him. You're doing good. You're delighting the Lord. You're committing to the Lord. You're trusting in him. You're resting and you're waiting the Lord. And you're saying, Lord, I'm leaving your hands. So, 
I'm going to ju just put a zip on this one. I'm going to open my mouth. Be silent before the Lord. Did I tell you it's just you stand back and watch what God doesn't do? And I'm a sick Right? What's this we think? I'll just show you a couple of words. <clears throat> right? You know, God wants to lead you by the Spirit of God the rest of your life. He wants you, I was telling you on Friday night, you know how, how to get a good heart by yielding and yoga to the Lord and falling and listening. He leads you. There's wee verse years ago I was read as a young born again Christian. It's, it's found in Isaiah 30. God wants to take all his children and he has a path and a plan and a way for to lead all his children into the path and plan which he wants. Let's listen to the Spirit of God. Psalm 30, verse 21. Psalm 30, verse 21. On thine ears shall hear a word behind thee. This is the way. Walk in it. God will start to lead your life when you yield and you yoke yourself and so rest to him as he starts to lead and guide you. And you apply all them things I was saying in 37. Don't get threatened. Don't get worried. Don't get worried. Just keep all your care upon the Lord. You wait in Him. And your ear will hear a word behind you. This is the way. Walk in it while you turn to the right or left. Start to learn that God leads you by the peace of God. The Spirit of God leads by the word, by the peace of God. And do not do anything unless God's peace is ruling and up around your life. And that's you guarding your heart. God starts to direct your steps. And this becomes a personal walk for each one of us. And did I tell you this? The supernatural word of God and the peace of God and the presence of God will lead your life. Only when we take the eyes of the Lord again and we love the situations that we lost our peace in that. Let me show you this a wee thing. Uh, wait you. Let me show you this again in my life. Psalm 33, verse 11. Now the Lord has told me different things in different situations in my life. And, and the Lord told me to stay away from certain believers and walk the path he wants. And can I tell you, Psalm 33, verse 10 and 11. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. The Lord brings the wrong counsel to naught. He made up the device of the people of no effect. There's people coming up with schemes and devices, believers, to think, listen, I'll come to no effect most of it. But listen, the problem is, that's all right for them to follow that, and that's their choice. But when they choose to implant that onto other people's minds, I'll take them off. Next verse. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, and the thoughts of his hearts to all generations. Now, this morning, I can't tell you how to learn and tune yourself up, how to hear God's voice. There's other things you need to know. But I want to tell you, is the Lord wants to lead you by his counsel. I'm not wanting to counsel anybody. I want to hope that I'm leading, hearing God's counsel. And I'm just telling you, the Lord wants to hear your but He wants to lead you by his counsel. As you and I walk in this path, but I tell you, yes, the Lord will take you on a path. I just want to show you a couple of a wee things here. Look at First Samuel 15, verse 22. See, a lot of things today, you know, if you want the children of Israel, they're doing all these sacrifices and burning these calves and they're doing this and they're doing that. What does the Lord delight in? What does the Lord delight in? What does the Lord delight in? What's this? First Samuel 15, verse 22. Someone comes along and says this, Hath the Lord a great delight in burnt offering inside of us and in obeying the voice of the Lord? The Lord, the Lord is delighted when he gets one of his child's children to follow his bush. The Lord absolutely delights him when he gets one of his children to follow the Lord. 
Listen, I remember years ago when I was standing in Ballymena and I was waiting my wife's shop and I had done stores. And this one, the labor walker walked up the other side of the step and she, this is, she said to me, To obey is better than sacrifice. And she just walked off. God delights in his children obeying his words. It's better than all these sacrifices you can give. Listen, I'm just trying to tell you the words are. And the Lord wants to be everything in your life. Now, we'll show you a couple of new things and then we'll finish here. What's this? Here's another thing. See, this morning, after hearing this message, will each one of us let the Lord be our end? Right? For he wants to be our end. What's this, Weaver? What's this? He wants to be, he wants to be everything to us and he wants to be everything for us. Now, we'll show you this. Hebrews 7, verse 25. Never forget this. This is very precious to me, this verse. Hebrews 7, verse 25. A.B. Wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost, that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. The Lord is making intercession for me. 24 hours every day, 60 minutes, 66 or 7 minutes. The Lord is interceding for me. I got a revelation. The Lord is an intercessor. He's intercessing for me. And I know as the body of Christ, we're to intercede for one another. But even we don't do that, the Lord's still interceding. He's interceding in heaven. He wants us to intercede on earth for his children. And what's a couple of your things? Now I'm just going to read a couple out here. Listen, up. the Lord is our Savior. The Lord is our caretaker. The Lord is our vindicator. The Lord is our defense. The Lord is our provider. Philippians 4. My God shall supply all my needs. I remember in the college, I listened up. No Paul was coming along and saying, my God can supply all my needs, but I'm not sure he can supply yours. I know he can supply mine, but you know he can supply yours. See, there's a format today, even in church, you must follow a certain format. But listen to this here, if God calls you, God will provide for you. With the vision comes the provision. You must... According to church, so a certain way that other people must provide you. But I tell you, God will provide and make providers for you. To provide for you. And that's what they call that. Totally dependent on the Lord. Know the Lord will have put into people's hearts. To provide. What I'm just saying to you is if you can understand what God wants to do for you, and He wants to each one of us. He wants to live. My wife said to me yesterday, says, oh, you're all right. The Lord done this and the Lord done that and the Lord done any other thing. I said, we here after the Lord called me. After the Lord called me, he done all these things. Please. The Lord's no man's there. What he orders, what he pays for. And he'll put it on somebody's heart or someone's supernatural hand. And I keep you going here to 12 o'clock to tell you what the Lord's done. I want to tell you anything this morning. The Lord wants to be that to every one of us. I just want to try and finish here. The Lord's our strength. The Lord's our sustainer. Who are you listen again? The Lord is the apostle and the high priest of my confession when I confess the Lord Jesus Christ. And he confesses before my angels. And he confesses before the Father. And can I tell you, yes, your angels can start to work for you when you know the Lord Jesus Christ is your confessor. What's this we think? Listen, this is so easy one. The Lord is my shepherd. Do you hear this? The Lord wants me to come to him for conversion. He wants me to follow him for direction. 
and he wants to we to go for him when he calls me. I can go. And the Lord wants the Lord wants me to serve him the rest of his life. As one who's willing to serve and lay down everything for him. See this morning, I hope the Lord has been magnified. I want to tell you, God wants you in your life to be happy to be left up in your life. I just want to pray. Father, we thank you this morning for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you this morning for everyone online, everyone in church, and everyone to hear this message. Father, we pray that each one of us would look into these verses of Scripture and see that you want every, you want to be everything for us. And you, you want to do everything for us too. And we thank you for these things this morning. We thank you that you are the great high priest of our confession. And Father, we want to confess you more and more as we see what you are and what you've done for us and what we'll continue to do. And you will keep on. We are looking for the blessed hope the coming again of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you for it. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. <coughs> I'm going up after